Hi guys, it's Alex from The Style Jungle here and welcome back to our YouTube channel. This weekend we're spending in one of our favorite regions of New Zealand and it is Waikato. So we have just arrived to Hamilton which is obviously the capital of Waikato and the biggest city uh, here in the region and we just checked in in the No Hotel, uh, hotel here in the city center. Uh, we're very very excited about all the activities planned for this weekend and it all starts today with a delicious dinner I hope. So let's see what they have for us. The reason we are having dinner in this particular restaurant in the hotel today is because the chef who works here, Chef Makusi, he focused his menu on the local producers so almost every position on the menu has like a little remark where this beef comes from, where those greens come from and they're all from here, from Waikara. And I think it's so important when you're traveling to eat local and to really enjoy local flavors and to celebrate local producers. So we decided to give it a go. So it's Saturday morning and what is the best way to start this Saturday than to go to Hamilton Gardens. Of course Hamilton Gardens is one of the most popular attractions here in Hamilton and one of the um, most known uh, locations in the whole Waikato region. It is as well one of our favorite places to come because first of all this is just beautiful collection of different gardens. Of course they are uh, themed as well so you can find Italian garden here or Renaissance garden or like Alice in Wonderland themed garden so uh, it's uh, quite a lot of stuff uh, packed here and uh, it's so diverse that you basically can create any kind of content here because uh, yeah if you want to uh, you know have Italian kind of background uh, for your picture you don't need to travel to Italy because you can come here and uh, shoot it here so it's it's very uh, handy as well now we're at that part of the gardens we have actually never been to this is uh, the huge rose garden and it's absolutely beautiful we are now at the very beginning of the period when uh, roses are blossoming so it's a perfect time to come here uh, actually in November um, to see all this beauty of the nature so it's very very exciting guys and uh, this is just our first stop we have a lot of things planned for this weekend so I hope you uh, can stay with us uh, for the whole video and see what we have for you walking around Hamilton Gardens and just randomly found out that there is a Russian bell tower here in Hamilton Gardens which is very very surprising and it seems like this was donated to this uh, park by the uh, New Zealand Russian uh, Community Trust in 2002 so it's a very very good example of uh, Russian architecture of 17th century here in uh, New Zealand, so uh, yeah, uh, amazing to see this. We have arrived to Hamilton Zoo. We haven't been in a zoo for quite a while because a lot of really dreadful things can be happening in a zoo with animals who are kept in captivity. 
but we have read a lot about New Zealand zoos and all the conservation projects they are participating in and how they are helping endangered animals to survive and to breed here. So we were really curious to find out how do animals live here are they safe? Are they happy? And what I love about Hamilton Zoo is that you can talk to zookeepers here. There are face-to-face -face encounters where you learn a lot about animals and how they help them to survive. So I hope I will be able to ask a few questions and to find out really can zoos be ethical or is it still something that should belong to historic books? For a face-to-face -face encounter with animals who live here you have to pay extra $25 but part of this money goes to various conservation projects that Hamilton Zoo is participating in. So by meeting the animals, you're not only having fun, but you're also actually helping them, which I find is really great. I was reading on their website yesterday that this white rhino that is here, they are like near threatened. So there are not a lot of species, but it's not critically endangered animal. Though there are other rhinos that are critically endangered and there is actually a huge success story of how there were only a hundred rhinos of that type left all over the world and due to the efforts made by zoos in different countries there are now over 20,000 rhinos of that type and there are also they went from critically endangered to near threatened ones and I think it's one of the bonuses of why zoos should exist. Do they miss the wild when they are in the Hard to tell. I mean, he always needs a kid before he's got females. Um, yeah. And he is extremely relaxed considering the things he's seen in his life. Yeah. Like, obviously, 20 years ago, zoos were quite different places. So, having gone from not seeing a door or a human, let alone a plane, um, his demeanor is ex extremely good. He's calm. So, I think that indicates he's doing all right. But obviously, we prefer them all in the wild. But we have learned that friendly encounter here in Hamilton Zoo only happens if animals want that. For example, with rhinos, if he or she doesn't go inside the house where people are waiting for them or just suddenly decides to leave, the friendly encounter stops, so they are never forced to do that. And also, I have asked whether it's stressful for them when people touch them, because obviously it's not something they experience in the wild. But um, in this particular case with the rhinos, that's fine, unless you touch them around the face. So that's a no-no, you don't do that. But if it's somewhere else around the body and you're like really careful and slow, they don't care, they're relaxed and they said that they're here, they're not stressed, they're happy, they're playful and yeah, overall well kept after animals. So we're now in Sky City, here in the city center of Hamilton. We have a date night uh, planned, so it's going to be two games of bowling and uh, some food as well, so you can basically book a package, have uh, dinner here, enjoy your ice cream and uh, of course play bowling. And afterwards we are going to go and try something really, really interesting that we never tried before. So I'm really excited about that, so stay with us if you're interested to know what is that. Thank you. 
so here comes the unusual part. We're gonna be playing golf. Neither of us have ever played golf before. We have no idea how to do that, so it's gonna be really fun. So it was our first ever experience playing golf, and we basically suck at golf, as uh, we found out. Uh, I guess because no one really explained us uh, what to do and we actually had to figure it out ourselves so it took us uh, yeah, some time and I think we never succeed uh, actually in this like 30 minutes session but it was a very interesting experience so I'm uh, actually glad we tried it we'll see you tomorrow because we still have uh, lots of things to do tomorrow see you very soon Day two starts with a visit to Mount Gatautari Scenic Reserve. It's the largest fenced reserve in the world, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll find out more soon. So we are going to learn more about bees and birds who live in this reserve and enjoy some beautiful views. Yeah, it's the longest fence in the world. So there is a variety of uh, walking tracks here, taking from uh, five minutes up to actually several hours. So you can pick the one you want and uh, basically spend like a whole day here. Uh, there are benches everywhere so you can have lunch uh, here as well. And one of the most fascinating things you can do here is to see kaka, which is New Zealand parrot. There is a feeding spot uh, near the tower so you can basically sit down and wait for Kaka to come there. Uh, they really like sweetened water, so uh, they come very very close and they're not really afraid of people, so uh, you can take really uh, good pictures and see them uh, very very close, which is absolutely fantastic. So it definitely made our day already. And now we are very excited to go and do some kayaking. This is not uh, what we actually usually do. Um, we have some experience in kayaking, but not a lot. So it's very, very interesting to try uh, it once again. We're at Lake Koropira. So they have Lake District Adventures over here. You can either rent a kayak or a bike and enjoy the views of the lake, either from water or from the earth, whatever you prefer. We have chosen water today. back from our tour and we have learned so much I can't imagine where should I even start talking about that but first things first there are two types of tours you can do here a day tour like the one with it or the evening tour if you want to see glow worms I'm sure you have already seen how beautiful it is down in the canyon with beautiful walls and that's where the glow worms are so if you want something really special evening tour is an amazing idea but overall it's such a great experience and the river is so tranquil and so quiet and there are like no people at all so even if you don't have any experience in kayaking you will do great here and if you don't do great they can even tell you so basically you don't have to do anything but 
yeah it's very easy but it's so enjoyable i i can't express all my emotions right now we really really love this tour and it's so nice because the group is really small like our group was two people but normally they don't go above 24 people and it's only in high summer season obviously so you get to ask questions you chat to other people you chat to your guides and it's really like a family type kind of activity and it's really yeah getting up close and personal with the nature it's so special so guys that's about it for this weekend it was absolutely amazing it was very very diverse in terms of experiences we had i hope you enjoyed watching this video uh, if you did just make sure to click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel to support us and if you want to see more videos like this one uh, make sure to click on the pop-up banner over here to see some more new zealand travel videos and we We'll see you guys in our next vlog or video. See ya! Bye bye!